Hey everyone, welcome to my monthly wrap up. I'm Carlos, I'm a professional photographer and a drone pilot based here in Southern California. In this video, we're gonna take a look at shark activity over the past month, and I'll also share a clip of behavior that I filmed again that to this day, no one has been able to explain. Now, this is only my second monthly wrap up of this year. Yes, I know it is June, but the conditions just haven't been ideal for filming sharks. I've also been very busy working on some exciting projects that I just can't share with you quite yet. But overall, it's been a tough year for spotting and tracking sharks. Still, I managed to find a few, and I'll show you a few of those in just a few moments. But first, let's talk about what's really going on. The biggest factor behind the reduced shark activity this year? Well, in my opinion, it's the weather, and especially the water temperature. Add poor visibility to the mix, and it's been a challenge. The sharks may still be around, but I've been grounded on most days. And if I'm not flying, I'm not finding. That's a major part of it. Even on the limited days I've managed to get out, shark sightings have been rather scarce. But that doesn't necessarily mean there's no sharks out there. I think they might just be somewhere else. Somewhere probably warmer. Water temperatures have been relatively steady but cold this year. Just this week, I recorded readings around 58 Fahrenheit and slightly lower across most areas I surveyed. Over time, I notice a consistent trend. Shark sightings tend to increase once water temperatures hit around 64 Fahrenheit or 18 Celsius. That seems to be kind of the magic number. Below that, sightings tend to drop. Above it, they rise. So with temperatures still hovering in the high 50s, it's not surprising that sharks have been rather hard to find. All right, so let's take a look at what I did find this month. Southern California is experiencing quite a bit of a red tide. From above, here's what it looks like. Red tide is usually linked with low oxygen conditions and likely one of the reasons we've seen a surge in marine mammals getting sick from domoic acid poisoning. So I shifted my efforts further offshore and that's where I spotted this shark. This is a solid white shark, probably in the 10 to 11 foot range. Unfortunately, I only had a few brief moments with it before it dove and I couldn't find it once again. That's how it goes. Some days they stay there forever and some days, well, you only get a few moments with them and they disappear. But even with the tough conditions, sharks are still around and I'm still documenting behaviors that we just don't fully understand. Take this for example. Just last week, I filmed another instance of that strange, unexplained gill shaking movement. Watch how the head shakes side to side and how the gills take this almost gelatinous wobble look to them. Here it is in slow motion. We've seen it before and we still don't know exactly what it means. And here's another clip I filmed just last year, much closer, showing the exact same movement. What do you guys think? What's going on here? One theory is that it could be related to digestion or clearing debris from the mouth or gills. Now sharks do make lots of purposeful gill movements. Take a look at these two clips. In the first, the gills flare and there's a quick burst of expelled debris. You can see it right here. Now watch this next one. The gills open wide again, but this time there's no shaking involved. These movements are very different from that shaking gill behavior we saw in that first clip, right? Now, as the month progressed, conditions didn't improve. With the persistent May gray and the marine layer, I finally decided to just head south to Baja, California, where the water temperatures were warmer and I was able to find black tip sharks and lemon sharks. And if you missed it, I also captured rare footage of orcas taking down a humpback whale. You can check out that full video here. Back in California, just before the month ended, I did manage to spot a couple more white sharks. Not only were they big, but they had some really interesting features. Here's the first one. Check out the scratches on its nose. Usually when I see these scratches, it tells me that these are subadults or larger white sharks that have been encountering sea lions or seals, and they get these scratches likely during that hunting attempt. Now this shark also had a noticeable copepod load dragging from its dorsal fin. These parasites give it this almost jet light silhouette. What's fascinating is how these copepod loads vary from shark to shark. 
In this clip, you can clearly see both the scratches and the parasites. And here's the last shark I spotted this month. It surfaced only briefly, but gave me a beautiful view. Look at the speckled white dots across its back. A lump near the dorsal, that's another cluster of copepods. It's always interesting how some sharks carry these large parasite masses while others seem totally clean. Like most months, I did find other species worth filming, as I often do. Here's some bonus footage of a pod of dolphins that were just too active to ignore. I like to think that these dolphins were just as happy as me to see the sun finally come out. In reality, they were actually mating. I'll maybe share some of that footage at some point in the future. I've got lots of young ones that watch this channel with their parents, so, you know. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this month. Not a ton of shark activity, but I fully expect a warming trend to bring more sightings, more behavior, and more fresh content your way. Remember, what you see on this channel is often just a few minutes from hours and hours of filming. I appreciate your support and I'm happy I can share this footage with you before anyone else sees it. By the way, make sure to check out Shark Fest on Nat Geo this year. You'll likely recognize some of the clips. And lastly, stay tuned for a new episode of Ocean Talks coming up soon with Dr. Phil Stearns, who consults closely with me on this channel. You guys all know him. We've got a lot of cool things coming your way. In fact, we have a couple of shark research papers in the works, one already accepted for publication later this year. Can't wait to share those details with you. Thanks for watching, and as always, I appreciate the likes, the shares, your subscriptions. Your support on this channel really makes a difference. Hope to see you next month, and wish me luck. I hope to find a lot of sharks in the coming months as the weather gets warmer. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.